This Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, we're celebrating Asian voices in the community with Chicago history makers. I never imagined it for myself, having someone that looked like me sit in the seat of older person. And those fighting for a cure. My wife and I have helped raise more than $700,000 for Parkinson's research. A family's pursuit of the American dream. We're so lucky we came to America. And authentic flavors inspired by love. I had had Indian food before, but this was like completely different. ABC7 presents Our Chicago Asian Voices, hosted by Judy Sue and Ravi Bechua. Welcome to Our Chicago Asian Voices. Today we're sharing stories from the incredible people and places that make up Chicago's growing Asian American and Pacific Islander community. And we're in Ping Tong Memorial Park near the heart of Chinatown. And for years, this area has served as an old rail yard. Maybe you can hear the trains. Now it's been transformed into a beautiful community gathering space with a fantastic children's playground and offers all kinds of impressive river and skyline views. In fact, a lot of Chicagoans may not even realize this hidden gem is right here in the heart of our city. And just around the corner from here is the Chinese American Service League, now the largest social service agency in the Midwest serving the Asian American community. From youth development programs to senior meals and pandemic relief, Castle continues to do wonders for the entire community. We have featured Castle before, but now the organization's CEO and COO are leading yet another first of its kind initiative in the country called change insight. Paul, Jared, thank you for, for sitting down and, and chatting about this initiative. Very excited that it's finally launched. So explain how Change Insight works. You're really taking a really deep dive into these numbers. So a lot of people will get surveys in their home. They'll take a survey, fill it out, send it back in, or they make it a survey on the street. This is a bit different. It's a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a caseworker, and they then complete the survey based off that conversation. So it's more of a clinical kind of approach, but it also provides more accurate data. This data focuses on social determinants of health, and for the first time will help to give all of us a more precise picture of the growing Asian American community. From 2000 to 2019, the AAPI population nearly doubled, making it the fastest growing population in the U.S. So with this project, we're able now to break down more than 50 subgroups. And so we're hoping as we collect data, we can give every different ethnic subgroup their own voice. And is this ultimately driving at um, funding and social services programs for these various organizations? Yes, and you know, APIP, uh, recently just came out with a report that for every $100 that philanthropy provides to the API community, the API community organization only receives 20 cents to every $100. With so very little funding, it's impossible for us to do the work. And so having this project, having the data, we're able to now convey a more meaningful conversation with our stakeholders, our foundations, our supporters in our own communities. And in the Chicagoland community, this groundbreaking initiative is now gathering and analyzing critical data from six local organizations, including APNAGAR, a human rights organization working to end gender violence among immigrant populations. For us, reaching a larger audience that we haven't perhaps reached before or hasn't come forward, for whatever reason, maybe this will help us get to them. This will help us uh, better case manage. What is the accessibility? What are the barriers? Where we need more resources, perhaps, we can target and have more representation. So they're gonna help us reach a wider audience. What is the ultimate goal with this after you collect all this data? This time next year, we'll go national with our data systems to be able to collect data from across the country, from New York to Houston, Seattle, uh, San Francisco, Minneapolis. And the hopes will then be to expand to other minority and other immigrant populations outside of the AAPI population. It's really to give us a voice. We're not trying to take anything away from other communities. We want to show that there is a deep need in the API community and allow all of our API sister organization around the country to have a seat at the table. I, Nicole, see, you solemnly swear, you solemnly swear. Now pulling up a seat to the table is Nicole Lee, the first Asian American woman to serve on Chicago City Council. I sat down with Nicole to talk about this historic moment. 
It was a little bit of an out-of-body experience, just I think being in the city council chambers, having my hand on a Bible, like for real, not just pretending. Yes, for real, and it has been a whirlwind of a few weeks for Chicago's newest older woman. She slowed down just a bit on this day, meeting us at the Joby Art Center. So let's talk about the significance and what it means to you to be sitting in this space in the heart of Bridgeport right now and talking about you becoming the first Asian American woman to be an alderman in the city of Chicago. I don't know if your camera can see, I just got like goose pimples with you saying that. I know how significant it is as someone who grew up in the community and couldn't have honestly imagined it. Like I never imagined it for myself, let alone sort of thinking about having someone that looked like me sit in the seat of older person. Lee is the oldest of three siblings with deep roots in Chicago. Her father, a deputy chief of staff for Mayor Richard M. Daley. I grew up in Chinatown, basically in the same building that I'm living in now. My mom was a business owner. Um, she and my, my aunt Margaret ran a business. Uh, it was a beauty salon, flower shop, and gift shop. I mean, we had all kinds of hustle going on back then. Although she always felt a call to serve her community, she told me politics wasn't her first choice. After graduating from Indiana University, she worked with nonprofits and the railroad industry, most recently as an executive with United Airlines. So when this position opened up, the alderman in this ward, what made you decide, maybe I want to do that? I had a phone call from a member, a leader in the community saying, oh, you know, I wanted to have this really important conversation with you. And I was like, okay, what's going on? I, usually when people call me out of the blue, it's about an airline issue, right? I'm not a person that seeks out the limelight at all, but I'm not also uncomfortable in it. And at the end of the day, I felt like, oh, I think I would be a stronger voice in this. I take very seriously the, the responsibility I have now, representing the constituents of this ward and really now being the, the face for Asian American residents of the city of Chicago, especially here in uh, the Chinatown Bridgeport area. It's a big deal. <laughs> Still to come on Our Chicago Asian Voices. Traditional, that's a nice Chicago Filipino fusion. Every day. I went further and further, and I just kept pushing the limits. I, I, I didn't stop there. But up next, it feels so happy. It's all me. We're all together in love. Every time. <laughs> Hey, if you like that video, be sure to subscribe to our ABC7 Chicago YouTube channel.